Could a free book writing tool actually transform your writing process? That's what we're gonna tackle in this video. Hi, I'm Jonathan Milligan. I'm the author of currently 12 books and I've primarily used three different writing tools to create these books. These two I created using Scrivener, which a lot of people use. These five here I used Atticus, which you can find videos on my channel about how I use the Atticus writing tool. It's a great piece of software. And then these are more journals, workbooks, planners, and these I used Canva. But there's a brand new one, at least brand new to me, that I've never heard of, that is called Readsy Studio. Now, readsy has been around a while. They do a lot of tools and a lot of resources for writers. But this is actually a completely free writing tool. One of the books that I'm working on is I wanted to take my book series, which I've currently got five books in the series, and I wanted to create a daily reader, something that has maybe a little illustration, a little lesson that someone could use each day throughout the whole year. So 365 lessons. And it became a little bit difficult to do this in Atticus, slowing down the process because it's 365 some chapters. So I started looking around for different options and that's when I came across Readsy Studio. So I'm in the middle of working on this book and so I wanna show you an example use case. So what I did to get started was I simply signed in with my Google account and in here, we can go see what it actually looks like. So this is the writing tool itself. I'll get a little bit more into this. This is the output that it has created for the PDF version, which I think is really nice formatting for publishing your books and more. So let's actually go back and let's start with, let's go back here. So when you come into it, you're not gonna have anything listed in here, obviously, and you're gonna have to start. Now you can either create a book or you can import a book. Now what I did was I imported the book because I had it in a Word doc file and it imported pretty easily and pretty effectively. So that's what I did to pop in my book right here. Now when you go to create a book, you're gonna have the manage section and you're gonna have the write section. Now, the, under the manage section, this is where you're gonna work on your title, your sub. You can set up some writing goals if you want. You can upload your book cover like I did here. And then there's the export section, which we will come back to in just a second. And then the access is if you wanna invite collaborators, like an editor or maybe you're co-writing the book, you can do that as well. So Readsy is, I would say my first feeling of using this only for the last couple of days is that it's very intuitive. There's not a lot of features and maybe that's a good thing. Now, if you want really advanced features, go to Scrivener. If you want more advanced formatting features, then Atticus is a good choice. But if you're like, I just want a good looking book, then Readsy completely free is a really good option. So what do you do once you're inside? Once you're inside and you set up your writing project, then we'll come over here and this is what it looks like. Now you can, you can push away the two side panels so that you have really clean, easy writing like I have right here, which makes it nice. And as you highlight certain things, you get options. So this is where all of your writing tools come in, where you can make it a header, you can change if you want the left align, center, right align, numbered list, bullet list, quotes, a little bit of code blocks, your bold and your italicized, and on it goes here. So you have those that are available to you. Now, if we open up the side panel over here, you can see that I've got front matter, body, and I've got the back matter. So if I open up the front matter and I click on edit, then I can turn, toggle on the ones that I want. If I want a dedication page, I can toggle it on. If I don't, I can turn it off. Same thing with all of these. Table contents on, off, forward, preface, acknowledgements. Pretty simple there on the front matter. Now, you don't have much customization beyond this, but again, I love the simplicity of this. So that's the front matter. Now in the body, this is where you're gonna have all your chapters, your parts, your sections. 
And like I said, this project for me is a big project because there's 365 chapters because it's 365 days of the year. And so I needed something that can run very quickly in between chapters and not slow me down. So that's why I have enjoyed using this because I can pop over to January 7th, work on that one. I can go down here January 24th, pop down here to February 2nd. You can see it moves pretty quickly amongst each of the different chapters. Now, if you want to write a new chapter, so let's go down here and I think I am right here getting ready to start March. So if I click on February 29th, then when I go to add, do I want to add a chapter or do I want to add a new part? Now, a new part is going to create a new section if you have sections in your book, but I'm just going to create a new chapter. Once I do and I click on that, it takes just a second and then it's going to pop in unnamed. Now, I can come in here and I can say, for example, this is March 1st. And so that's going to be the headline. And then this is where I would do my writing. Right now, it also has spell checker. There's other things over here on this side that you can pop in and out. But you have goals and insights, which are cool, but you give you progress. How many days in the, are you been working on this book and adding a writing goal in here and all the stuff that you want as a writer to encourage yourself to perform. You can add a pen note in here, track changes. You can go back to history on your writing timeline. So if you mess things up, you can go back as well. You can find and replace. It's got spell check. You can insert an image. You can insert an end note. You can insert scene breaks. You can split a chapter up. You can delete a chapter. And then this is where you can go to export the book, which we'll be looking at in a second. You can share it. And of course you got settings down here. So you can see it's pretty simple, pretty intuitive when it comes to all of this, right? So now there are, a, there is a section called planning. Now planning is more for people who are writing fiction. And what you'll do in this section is you'll go through and plan out and plot out the characters, the plot and all this. But you can also set this up very easily for your nonfiction books too. It's really intuitive. You can just move things around as you'd like. You can click on them, come in here, and it'll tell you about the features and help you understand this a little bit better. This is actually a note because it's showing you how you can add a lot of stuff in here. Now you can come over here and decide that you want to add a blank note. You can create a folder. You can also come over here to this side and create your own board if you want a separate board. So this is an example of a separate board where you can come in here and just add a note. Very quick, very fast, very efficient, intuitive. It's pretty cool. I love how fast that this software is. Now you can download this as an app. Now I'm on a Mac, so I don't know if this works on Windows, but if you see right up here where my mouse is toward the top, there's this button that says install app. And if you download it, you can install it where you're not working inside of a browser if you'd like. So that's a little bit of the writing. What do you think so far? Are you enjoying content like this? Let me know. In fact, hit like or even subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified the moment a new video drops. All right, let's get back into it. So what about the formatting. How is that going to work? It's a big question a lot of people have. When I started using Scrivener to write my first two books, the one of them was a traditional publisher, so they handled all the formatting. But the other one was a self-published book, and I had to download a template from KDP and try to copy and paste and make it work so that it would be look good. And it was just okay. Didn't look professional. But when I started using Atticus and now ReadZ, it looks professional, it looks nice. In fact, the output of the version that I have right now, this is how it looks for each day. Very professional, looks great, formatting, and is exactly what I was hoping to go for this particular book. So how do you use the exporting feature inside of here? If you're in the writing section, you can go back over here to manuscript. And once you're in the manuscript, you can click over and go to export. Another way you can get to it is you can come over here and go to exports. 
and here's your options. Now again, this is designed to keep things simple. So there's not a whole lot of options, but in some ways it's good because it's less overwhelming. And at the end of the day, what most of us need is just something that looks good, it looks nice. So let me show you what you got. So you gotta choose between a print ready PDF or your other option is an EPUB. So this is perfect for your print books. These books that look like this, these are what you want to upload to KDP is a print is a print ready PDF. That's what you're gonna wanna submit. And then for your EPUBs, uh, it's gonna obviously be for your Kindle book. So you gotta decide which one of these that you're gonna go with. Then you gotta decide, do you wanna hide the chapter numbers? And do you want drop caps? Now, if you scroll down here, you can see what it looks like right now. So it has the chapter number up here. If I say hide chapter number, you see it's gone, right? Now, in my case with this book, I am wanting to hide the chapter numbers because I don't need 365 chapters. I just want to use my title as my chapter. So this is a use case for why you might wanna get rid of the chapter numbers, but you may not want to. All right, so scroll back up here. Now drop caps will, let me just click on this and show you. It'll create the drop cap of the first letter. I have this in a lot of my books. For this particular one, I'm leaving that out. I like it to be more simple for this one. All right, then you got a choice for your end notes. Do you want them at the end of the page or end of the book in a separate chapter? I like having them end of the book in a separate chapter for mine. Now you've got your different trim sizes. So you've got six by nine, five and a half by eight and a half, five eighths, and then a pocket size. Now I primarily use five and a half by eight and a half in six by nine. And let me show you the difference here. So this particular book right here is a six by nine at your standard trade size. And then this series, which are smaller compact books, I've got five and a half by eight and a half. So you can see the different size differential there. Not a whole lot, but there is a difference there. So for this particular book, I'm going with a six by nine because it's going to be a longer books, 365 pages plus. So there you go. All right, now last setting you have down here is you have choosing a template. You've got three different styles. The Read Z using the Meriwether font, classic in the Crimson font. So it's a very classic traditional book or a little bit more of romance crimson. So if you're a romance writer, a story writer, and you like this style, you can go with this style. That's it. Now you are limited on the options here. As I said, something like Atticus has 20, 25 different versions and then lots of customizations beyond that. But I love the simplicity here again, because I think a lot of authors just get overwhelmed with all this. It's very simple. So I like this Reedsy Merryweather, and then that's it. Now you can always do the backup your book down here, which is probably nice to do every once in a while is to export a doc version, or if you wanna send it to a editor instead of inviting them into your project, they prefer to work from a Microsoft Word doc, then this is how you can send them a version of that. So when you come over here to export book, you will click on that, and once you do, it'll start working. And let me show you the previous exports right here. And it'll start working once it's done, it'll notify you by email, and then you simply click download. And again, this is the output. This is what it looks like. So that is how that works. So what do you think? Do you like this idea? Do you like this tool? Unlimited books, it's free, it's very clean. You can write very simply. And I find it to be very useful. I think for a lot of authors, they need simplicity more than they need a lot of options. Now, if you want a lot of options and you want more options for formatting, then be sure to check out my review on Atticus formatting. You can find out that video right here. Go check it out and I'll see you over on that video.